इंद्रियाणि परान्या इंद्रिये परम मन मनसस्तु परा बुद्धि यो बुद्धे पर In this verse, Krishna is giving us the inner hierarchy. The hierarchy within our inner world. And as you mentioned, this falls in a section about the inner war. The 36, 36 to 43. 36 was the question. Then 37 was the answer in which basically there's the identity of the enemy. And then I'm repeating the theme section because it's important to teach, because it's important to understand in context what's happening. The power, the scope, the reach of the enemy, that it it pervades or attacks all living beings. And its strategy or its gravity, that it covers our knowledge and the eternal enemy. And 40th was also discussed that boundaries how vital they are, how helpful and how vital they are. Now, here, sorry, that was the 41st one. 41st for the boundaries. And 40th was about the hideouts. Hideouts for the inner enemies. Now, today, we are in the 42nd text. Here, Krishna is telling, that in this inner hierarchy, what is the point of telling this? You consider a war is to be fought. Then there are multiple things to be done. Okay. Sometimes we may fight against the foot soldiers. That's okay. But no, ultimately you need to fight against the big persons, the people who are at the top, the people who make the who call the shots. So, like that, knowing who is where in the hierarchy is helpful. And similarly, from our side also. So hierarchy can, now we can have the hierarchy of the enemy and the hierarchy of the defenders. So Krishna is focusing here on the hierarchy of the defenders. And let's see what he says overall. That this, this hierarchy is so apt that this, in one sense, this one image, you understand this can summarize the entire predicament of material existence. There are sense objects in the world, and then there are senses that are attracted toward those objects. Above the senses is the mind. Now, above the mind is the intelligence. And Krishna says, above the Indian intelligence is the soul. So now we could say, this entire thing is the self. Of course, the conditioned self. And the earlier verse Krishna has said that the contamination of lust is present in the senses, the mind, and the intelligence. So, I would say this particular thing represents lust. So now, when Krishna is giving this hierarchy, first thing he has said in the previous verses, create some boundaries, regulate the senses. That means have some boundaries to protect yourself from the reflexive tendency of the senses to go toward the sense objects. So we could say there is a the whole self gets pulled down by it's like something high above get pulled down. This is the gravity. This is gravity pulls us down. So gravity of lust. 
आणि त्याचा वर्ड प्ले ग्रॅव्हिटी ऍट वन लेवल रेफर्स टू द फोर्स दॅट पुझ डाऊन ग्रॅव्हिटी ऑल्सो रेफर्स टू समथिंग इज व्हेरी ग्रीव सो येस इट इज द फोर्स दॅट पुझ डाऊन अँड द फोर्स इज ऑल्सो व्हेरी ग्रीव इट्स अ सी इट्स नो लाफिंग मॅटर इट्स अ सिरियस फोर्स सो नाव after giving this hierarchy in the next verse krishna will talk about what what it implies why is he giving us this hierarchy but let's explore this hierarchy a little bit so in this the senses now we could say at one level it's outside in the senses are the most outwards and the soul is the deep inner most so is that all that is there but no it's not just this hierarchy we consider the hierarchy is not just outside in kind of hierarchy it's also more like a bottom up that means who is higher who is stronger or at least who in principle is meant to be stronger so the senses they can run towards the sense objects and they can be very powerful generally speaking the sense objects don't come toward the senses so let's look at this one by one the st- steps in the hierarchy so at one level the senses are considered greater than the sense are higher than the sense objects now in the verse krishna himself does not explicitly mention the sense objects he says indriyani paranyahu that senses are above this and this the it is this material world filled with sense objects that ahu or iha those words are generic references to this and that refers to this material existence now why the senses consider higher than sense objects because generally the senses move toward the sense objects so for example if i we have a fridge and the fridge has ice cream the fridge does not open and come the ice cream does not come out of the fridge right into our mouth we go toward the fridge so person and say ice cream in a fridge so the idea is that generally the sense objects don't come towards us it is the person goes to the ice cream the ice cream doesn't go toward the person so in that sense the the greater agency is it the person and person means in this case the senses their eyes look at the fridge then their legs move toward the fridge then the hands open the fridge then the mouth opens and the ice cream goes into the mouth so it's basically the senses are considered higher than sense objects because the senses are the agency they have agency they are active now above the senses the mind is considered to be above the senses now why is that because at one level the senses may be inactive so it could be because the sense objects are unavailable mm-hmm. so even the sense objects are unavailable and the senses are inactive sorry the senses are inactive the mind can still be active so the mind can be triggered by imagination so the mind is triggered broadly in two ways the activity comes from the senses through perception when it sees something that can trigger it but another trigger point for it is also imagination and imagination does not require the senses to be active a person's mind can be fantasizing even when there is nothing going on at the sensory level and in that way we could say that if we create some boundaries for the senses the senses can't be active so easily the person is put in a place say for example a person is put in a addiction center the addict wants to recover in a de addiction center now their senses 
can't get access to any say drugs since they have no access to drugs and yet the mind can have great access to to its own imagination it may think that oh if i could just get this drug and i would go so high and be so good and i could get well, one shot and so much relief the mind can be not just imagining but it can be on a wild imagination right imagination can be hyperactive and in that sense the mind is about the senses this also happens in dreams our body is resting our senses are also active but our mind goes in various directions now this is relevant specifically in terms of combating lust what krishna is telling is that the contam okay bond we talked about boundaries in the previous words and that's important but boundaries alone are not enough along with the boundaries we also need something else and we need a multi pronged strategy so that strategy is to talk about the next words but before that that's he is talking about the hierarchy that krishna has hinted at this also that the mind be higher than the 3.6 when he said that somebody may regulate the senses but their mind is mind is contaminated with sense of objects and such a person is a hypocrite such a person is deluding himself mind is imagining contemplating fantasizing then that person is is a deceiver they are deceiving themselves they are deceiving the world the same point krishna is indicating by talking about this hierarchy over here the problem is multi level after that he says the intelligence is higher than the mind now at one level this is easy to understand we all if you if you associate the mind with emotions feelings desires then we understand that a person who is too emotional they can't be very reliable you can't let yourself get carried away by the emotions intelligence is meant to be guided by reason by logic so intelligence is higher than the mind means that sometimes our mind may be agitated but if we recognize is important suppose somebody is a firefighter they come to a giant fire their mind may be agitated my god how would we do this fire but they understand i am in charge over here i cannot show fear i cannot show panic over here every thing will collapse people are counting on me so that sense of responsibility that is that is the intelligence aware of that keeps that person alert that ensures that the person doesn't get carried away and ensure that person doesn't crumble under the weight of the problem so similarly with respect to uh, fighting any kind of temptation also there is a this hierarchy is in its own way important that the intelligence is also a place where a person where the enemy can attack krishna has said inter- that lust is also situated in the intelligence so we'll talk about how what we need to do to deal with all this so now interestingly what he says about this the soul is above the intelligence is right this down so now the soul is about the intelligence what this means again is that the person may this nothing has any agent nothing has any power to act without the consciousness coming from the soul we remember that the standard metaphor the soul subtle body now generally i refer to it as soul mind and body but you could say the soul a subtle body a subtle body has two components broadly the intelligence and the mind and then there's a gross body the physical body now this everything is animated by the consciousness coming from the soul so the so the neither the mind nor the intelligence can 
can work if the soul's consciousness of the radiating energy is not coming out. So the example we are to give for this is that the soul is like the user of a computer. It's that the mind is like the software. And the body like the hardware. Now the software controls the hardware. That is fair enough. At the same time, neither the software nor the hardware can work if there is no user. So Krishna is saying the soul is above all these. In this way, Krishna is outlining in our hierarchy over there. Now, the implications of the higher hierarchy, we will talk about in the next verse.